interesting thing about a call center is <coughs> all these things are interrelated and linked together, right? Um, we used to, I'm telling you a true story now. My boss, in the old days, we didn't know all these things either, okay? I, when I was running the call center, I didn't know this. So if this is the first time you ever heard it, don't be, I, don't be alone. I was exactly the same. My <coughs> boss was very well off. She had a Jaguar or whatever. And what my staff would say is, she's coming, she's coming, because we could see the Jaguar coming into the car, car park, right? And then they go, quick, 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 because she always wanted 100% occupancy. Now, we were all doing just fine, but I knew she was coming up. Her name was Christine. So what did I do? Perry, sign off and go into the pantry. Look, sign off, go to the pantry. Now, when they signed off the phone system, what happened to the occupancy rate for all the rest of you? It went up because you ended up taking the calls that they would have been taking. Yeah. Then when she walked in, you know what she did? Oh, very busy. Very busy. Oh, all very busy. Good job, Dan. One day I also can have a Jaguar, right? <laughs> But then the moment she left, she go on the lift, what would you do? Sign on, sign on, right? Because then what would happen to all your occupancy rates? They would go back down. The reason I'm telling you this story is you have to say to yourself, who controls occupancy in a call center? Do the agents control occupancy in a call center? I control occupancy in a call center through how many agents I have signed onto the phone, by how much I forecast, by the service level objective I have, so to say to an agent that you have to have a certain level of occupancy doesn't make any sense because they don't control it. I control it. Um, I've heard some people say, oh, my boss makes me have 80% occupancy, but I can never do it. And I say, of course you can't. It's mathematically impossible. The only way you're going to be able to bring your occupancy up is to send some of your staff home early. But when you send your staff home early, what's going to happen to your service level? It will go down. So people are like, oh, now I see why, right? We have more to talk about on this. What drives occupancy? Well, the same things that drive service level, and we talked about it. It's the call volume, it's the AHT, and it's the agent capacity, right? So what drives available time? Can you guess? You know the drivers of service level. You know the drivers of occupancy. Can you guess what the drivers of available time is? The same, exactly right. The number of calls coming in, the average handling time, and the agent capacity. These three things are what make service level perform, occupancy perform, and available time perform. If your agents have too much available time, in your opinion, you may be overstaffed, you may have fewer calls coming in, or your AHT may be lesser than you thought. And what that did is that could be creating, uh, you know, customer wait times go down, available time goes up. Right? By the way, can I do what I call the chicken dance? And I do this, <laughs> I sometimes scoop it up, so I have to do it very, very slow, okay? Chicken dance, here we go. When your service level goes up, your occupancy will go, which way? Down, which means the available time of agents will go up which means that stress levels will go down, which means quality will go up. See, see what I mean by chicken dance? If I keep doing it fast enough, I'd be floating in the air with you, okay? I want you tonight to try and chicken dance when you're brushing the teeth or whatever. Don't chicken dance while you're driving, okay? It could be very dangerous, yeah? But keep saying to yourself the relationships here, because once you take those relationships in your mind, it really helps you understand the call center a lot more and when you walk in and you see everybody on the phones, you know immediately what kind of problem do you have. Your service level is going down, okay. By the way, I will talk to you about what occupancy will be. I will talk to you about the rates, yeah? Okay, okay. Now some people will say to me, Dan, well, if, if um, occupancy isn't how we should be running our call center, we should be running our call center based on service level, why do we even talk about it? And it was a great question. And because of that question I put it in this slide, when you're looking at service level, we're looking at this very much from the customer point of view. How long will we keep our customers waiting? When you look at occupancy, this is a great figure to look at to know how busy your agents are or will be. 